Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at transparent pixels. Now you might have noticed in our previous lessons, we've had a slight problem. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So in the previous lesson, we created what was a sprite sort of struct here, or maybe you're using a class, doesn't really matter. But the basic idea was to hold the texture and where that texture is being placed. That's what a sprite is. So let's go ahead and run this program here. I'll go ahead and recompile it and run it. And we can resize the window since we've set the logical presentation and it scales nicely. But uh, this doesn't look super great, right? You wouldn't want to see this in a game where we have this giant black box around our character. In fact, the advantage of having these raster style graphics or pixel by pixel is that we can be relatively precise with the details of our character. But again, we don't want the black box here. So how do we fix this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce to you something, something known as a color key. And the basic idea behind a color key, we'll go ahead and write it out here for you, is the color key uh, sets transparent pixels. Okay. So basically what it's going to do is when we load up our surface data, we can basically say, hey, make these pixels transparent or the alpha value 255 so that they're fully transparent or not visible. There's no opacity at all and just don't draw them. So it effectively just eliminates those pixels for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how to do this in SDL. Now, in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and bring us to the uh, API guide here, just so we can see what's going on in some of the different options. And let's go ahead to the API by category, and let's go ahead and see if we can find surface operations. So surface creation and drawing. And what we're gonna to wanna to look for is the color key here. Now we can get the color key. Uh, and we want to actually set the color key here. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this one. Uh, this is the function that we want to take a look at today. So again, it takes in a surface and basically we can say true or false. And then we'll set the key as a uh, basically an integer here. Okay, so that's going to be the color. Now you'll notice that this is a uint32 key here. Um, so again, just one integer value. So we'll have to think about uh, how exactly that works because Again, remember color is sort of specified in these red, green, and blue values and alpha values. So four channels that are each going to be eight bits, 32 bits total. So again, we'll have to think a little bit about how to work with that key here. Um, I don't know if there's an example here, but we'll go ahead and figure it out here uh, from the remarks. Actually, there's a little uh, handy helper there. So anyways, let's go ahead into our sprite function here. And let's go ahead and when I load my surface here, because this function is going to uh, take in the color key. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. And again, it'll return true or false based on if it works or not. Uh, and again, you can use SDL get error if for some reason it does not work. So let's go ahead and pass in our surface. Uh, we are going to want this enabled here. Um, and generally, if you're calling this function, you want it enabled. But again, if you're parameterizing your sprite or something uh, for if you do or don't want uh, these things to show up, then you can um, you know, have that uh, flag be true or false. And now let's go ahead and think about this key here. So this is the color here. So uh, if you've seen some of my lessons on um, sort of structs or unions or packing data on some of my various C, C++ or D tutorials, Right, you could represent a color here. Let's just call it an RGBA pixel here as something that has a, uh, you know, some integer value here, uh, or more likely an unsigned int. So I'm just going to sort of put an 8 bits, whatever that data structure is that you want to use here for red. Uh, and then, you know, the same thing for green, blue, and the alpha channel, right? So, I mean, in total, I have 32 bits of data. And again, blue might be switched around. I think in SDL, it might actually be BGR for blue, green, red, and then alpha. So again, uh, don't worry about it so much here. Uh, but the point is that I can pack these sort of um, values here that usually range or are stored within 8 bits between 0 and 255 into a 32-bit structure, OK? Um, so, you know, we don't have to worry about that too, too much. Uh, and again, you can watch some of my C, C++, or D videos um, where I talk about that. Um, but we do have this uh, handy function, a uh, few handy functions here that we can use here. I mean, really just this function here. So SDL map RGB. Let's go ahead and open that up. And basically map an RGB triple. So again, how we typically learn this uh, again, and this is the way that I've always learned it. So that's why I almost always uh, illustrate it this way as red, green, and blue uh, for the three colors here. So R, G, and B. 
Um, then we can just think of it that way. And basically what this function does, again, is maps that RGB triple uh, to an opaque pixel value for a given pixel format. So it'll figure out, or we can rather figure out the surface format here. Again, maybe this is stored in BGR, maybe it's something else, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna use this function here that says, hey, look up the actual pixel format details and then uh, basically convert the, uh, the, the values here. Okay, so that's the idea here. Uh, let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this function here. So I'm just going to, let's just paste it here for now. And again, you'll see this function returns a uint32 value, which we can just pass into our key. Uh, and let's just say our color key. And again, I'm going to do this in two steps here just to make it sort of, um, you know, a little bit more clear here. Most folks might just take this actual function and just, you know, pop it in here as an argument. That's also okay. Uh, but again, it'll be nice to see here. Okay, so we got to figure out what our format uh, details are SDL pixel format details. Okay, where can I figure that out? Well, again, let's just go from the documentation here. Let's click on that SDL format details here. Um, okay, and it looks like this stores all the information about the format, pixels per pixel, uh, any shifts, you know, so we know exactly that's formatted. Okay, so where does this exist here? I wonder, uh, and this is since SDL3 here, I wonder if we just look at SDL surface. And I'm going to just cheat here in the help here and just do SDL surface. Um, okay, it looks like it has the pixel format there. Okay, so what if I do SDL pixel format? Uh, so I could get the format from my uh, surface here. And let's see here, it looks like it's storing. Okay, so we'll know what the format is, meaning if it is red, green, blue, or whatever. Uh, let's try to find one that looks reasonable here. RGB 24, for instance, uh, could be the format. Okay, so that's not quite giving us what we want here. Let's see if in our SDL surface, um, let's go to the category surface uh, API here and see if we can find pixel format, uh, or let's just do like format here. Let's see if we can just get something directly from our surface here. Let's see, we got the color key here, or actually, uh, let's see, let me make sure I'm reading this right here. Uh, SDL pixel format details. I think I can, as long as I have the format from my surface, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see, let me go into the index. Let's just go into the index here. And the nice thing again about the SDL API, oh, I'm just gonna highlight this here, uh, pixel format details okay get fi pixel format details this is what we want we just want a, a get function here okay and then i can just from my surface get this directly okay so let's just go ahead and break this into a few steps here so let's go ahead and do this uh let's say our what type we want here uh okay and this is taking in a pointer so uh this is going to be get the pixel format details this is going to be from our uh, surface and from our surface we should be able to uh, I gotta gotta cheat here a little bit surface uh, pixel format let me make sure that was the argument here SDL pixel format yes okay so I'll just gr grab that directly as a parameter and let's go ahead and plug this in here uh, oh, let's give this a name here uh, details Okay, so details, and let's see here, oh, what did I do here? Hit some extra keys. Uh, okay, and then we need the palette here. How do we get the palette here? Uh, okay, SDL palette, let's see if there's a, I think there's a getter function. Uh, okay, SDL set palette colors, uh, we got a few of these here. Uh, I think just directly from the surface, we can get the palette here. Let's go to category surface, palette, Yes, SDL create surface power, SDL get surface palette. Okay, so we're gonna do this in a few steps here. So get the format details, uh, get the color palette. And I suspect the reason, um, I have to look at the actual API uh, migration guide maybe, might have some more details, but kind of breaking this up into different steps here and then passing this into the color key function. It used to be just like one or two steps, but 
Um, I suspect this can also give us some good air handling if, for instance, if we try to map an RGB value that's like out of range or something. So again, this is kind of nice that it's broken up into different uh, steps here, even though it seems like a lot. Again, we could just write a little function for this, but again, you know, just so we know all the, the little steps here. Uh, okay, so anyways, this is the SDL palette. Uh, I'm just gonna call this palette, uh, hopefully spelled right, one L, two Ts, yes. Uh, and let's go ahead and just pop this in here. And now uh, I can just specify the red, green, and blue values here. Now for this particular image here, uh, black pixels were what I wanted to get rid of. Okay, so again, uh, the problem that we are trying to solve here, uh, let's go ahead and try to run it here. I think we got everything we want. Well, it looks like it's pretty much solved. It's pretty cool, right? Now we see the nice blue background here. Now the issue is, um, let me zoom this in just a little bit more, uh, the eyebrows. Well, it looks like I can see through the eyebrows. Maybe I had some uh, dark pixels there. So um, here's the other sort of hint here. There's a few little uh, hints here uh, to still be uh, taken away. Uh, and let's go ahead and set the color key and set the surface. So let me show you the first thing here, just from a programming standpoint here. So we got the format details, we got the color palette. Basically, these were the things that were needed to set the uh, or map an RGB value. So given whatever the details are, the format. And again, these are talking about things like is this RGB, BGR texture, is the range 0 to 255, is it 0 to something else, etc. And we basically just said, hey, blank out these pixels and then set for that surface those pixels to be blank. Okay, so, so again, very important here with the set surface color key function. And then we generate the texture. Now, what I want to show you here is what if we mess up the order here uh, and I do something like that and I run it, uh, oops, you know, the, the black box, the black pixels are no longer transparent, right? So the order matters here before we create our texture because our texture is uh, sampling from the surface here. We need to make sure to set the color key. So that's one error that you could run into. Uh, the other thing that we want to run into, again, is subtle here. And this is where the communication comes in. Uh, as I mentioned here, is you'll notice the eyebrows, again, are, are blue here. And we can actually open up the image. Let's just open up the assets here with the character. Uh, and if I zoom way in just to confirm that, yes, uh, black pixels here. There we go. As I'm moving, you can kind of see here. Um, so what typically happens is uh, let's actually open up this image here. Uh, let's open it and let's see if we can open it in some other tool like GIMP. Let's see if it opened it here. Yep, this will work here. Uh, and let's go like 8x and uh, let's see if it'll go 800%. Okay, so typically what we might do here is uh, to fix this problem is to pick some like known color that's not part of your palette, okay? So maybe it's green, uh, and it's usually like something that'll stand out like a, a neon color or something, something that contrasts high. A common one is this sort of uh, pinkish hue here. Uh, let's see, I think this is gonna be fully like this here, 100, 100, yeah, something like that here. Uh, and I'm just gonna use the bucket tool. You can use any old tool that you have here and make it like that here, okay? So the this sort of, uh, let's see, fully red and fully blue color here. Let's go ahead and now export this out here. Uh, I'll go ahead and just save over it. Character, uh, I'll just save over it here. That should be okay. Uh, let's go ahead and export, so it's still RGB image. Okay, and let's go ahead and uh, we can already see the changes reflected here, which is nice. Uh, let's go ahead and rerun our program. Okay, we can see it here. Uh, the eyebrows are gone, right? Because we're getting rid of the, the black pixels. But now we can, you know, communicate with our artists or you could do this on a per sprite basis, but typically you would just use this. And this is a common color, unless this is color is part of your um, color scheme, of course, in your game or your color palette rather, then you don't use that color. So uh, let's go ahead and just fix this up. So in the red and blue channels, we're fully uh, set here. And now we can see our character, we've got the eyebrows back and uh, we have this nice transparent detailed looking character here. So very, very nice uh, to see there. Um, so that's pretty much it with color keys here. We'll leave this in again. This could be one of those things here again, 
uh, for your library. I don't know if it belongs part of the sprite class. Again, maybe it's part of a manager or something that creates uh, or generates your services where you determine this. And again, the last note was just that order is important. So you do want to make sure you do this before you actually create your texture because the texture is sampling from the actual pixels. And this function is basically saying, hey, make those pixels that are this color effectively. Uh, effectively, what it's doing is it's setting the alpha channel all the way up uh, for those pixels and just replacing them with that. So that's the idea. Alrighty, folks. So there you have it. Set surface color key. We got a little bit of practice otherwise exploring the uh, documentation to figure out some of the details. Again, there's pretty much a git or a set function for everything in SDL, which is really, really nice to see. Uh, as always, if you have questions, feel free to drop by the community here or in the comments below. I'll look forward to seeing what you're creating. And if you have other neat transparency tricks or these types of things, uh, feel free to let me know otherwise. Alrighty, folks, with that said, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks again for your time and attention.